Hi everyone, my name is Julie and thank you for clicking on to this video. Um, if you haven't watched any other of my videos, I would recommend that you do simply because in those I explain that I'm doing a no buy year for all of 2020 for all makeup, skincare, hair care, body care. And it also explains that as part of that year, I am going through and doing inventories of the makeup products that I currently have within my collection. And this video is going to be a, an inventory of all of the eyeshadow palettes that I have. So for the palettes, I think I have anything from a quad, actually no, I take that back, I have a few trios. Um, and upwards, as well as a few duos um, of eyeshadows. So basically anything that is not a single shadow, it has been put in this video. Um, I also have a lot of single shadows that I have put into Z palettes, but those I'm going to go into in a video exclusively dedicated to all of my single shadows. I thought that was more appropriate to put there, but these are sort of pre-made palettes that I have bought over the years. Um, I do have a lot. <laughs> um, at the end of this, I will uh, do a little count and I will put a number on the screen of exactly how many eyeshadow palettes I have. But I thought it would just be helpful for mostly myself and possibly somebody out there who's been wondering about a palette that maybe doesn't have that many YouTube reviews, so I thought I'd go through all of them and just share some very um, preliminary thoughts on the color story, the texture, the quality, everything like that. So within this, I'm trying to stick to um, brands, so I want to talk about all the Urban Decay palettes and then talk about all of the um, Viseart ones and all of the Chantecai ones, all of the Chanel ones together, so I've just sort of grouped it by brand and I don't have any other system of organization besides that. So they are in a bit of random order. I will put everything below um, with some timestamps so that you can see what I'm talking about at any given time if you don't want to look through and watch the whole video. And so with that said, I will go ahead and get started. So the first brand that I'm going to talk about is Urban Decay and that is simply because the Urban Decay original Naked palette was sort of I remember like the first palette that I ever really really lost it after and I remember it being probably I don't know 2011 something like that that it came out um, and basically it was so hard to get a hold of because it kept on selling out and I remember it was a big coup when I was finally able to get it and it came with a double-ended um, eyeliner one was like a brown shade one was black shade um, and I have used this pretty consistently throughout the years. Oh god, I saw the eyeliners in there, actually. And I've never really hit, um, so let me put the other Urban Decay ones up so they don't drop out of my lap. I've never really hit pan on any of the shadows, um, but here is what it looks like without bending it back. It's got that really terrible sort of like velour cover that gets really, really dirty, um, so that's not the best. But um, but the shadows really have stood the test of time. And I've used the most of probably Sin and Naked, which are these two shades here. So you have Sin right there, and then Naked right next to it. And then, of course, after the original Naked palette came the Naked 2 palette, the Naked 3 palette. Um, I did get rid of the Naked 3 palette at some point in time, but I still have the Naked 2. As you can see, super light use. And this, they finally did transition, or they finally, they did transition to giving you a dual-ended brush with it, as well as with the Naked 3. So I still have the Naked 3, um, which I do sort of regret. I also do, bought and then got rid of the Naked Smoky palette, um, and I was not really interested in any of the other Naked palettes, like not the, um, uh, like Naked Cherry one, the Naked Heat, none of them interested me until the Naked Honey. So let me see if I can show this to you with one not dumping on the brush and two not blinding you with a mirror. Um, so these are really beautiful golden shades and it was Mallory Cornelison who, I never pronounced her name correctly, but she's the one who really motivated me to get this. I think it's really unique in that they are truly gold shades, not orangey, not warm ready shades. Um, but so that's the first Naked palette that I've been interested in in quite some time and I do really like that one. I also bought and got rid of the Urban Decay on the Run palette, 
just the color story like I couldn't figure out how to make it work I'm not a very creative person when it comes to eyeshadows and that was just a little bit too outside of my comfort zone and in the sense that I just thought I would never get any use out of it so I didn't hang on to it. I did pick up two of the mini Urban Decay on the Run palettes and this purple one is Bailout and this red one is Shortcut. And I have to say that the texture on these is not very good. Um, they're patchy, they're very hard to work with and so a lot of the shades I haven't worked with. Um, but Bailout has more purpley shades as the packaging indicates and um, the other one Shortcut has more of these ready shades and they're basically neutrals with just a pop of color um so they both look really beautiful they haven't gotten much use hopefully at one point in time they will have a little bit more next i will talk about Too faced because that's again the next sort of like really crave worthy palette palette that i recall I'm sorry it's upside down so this is the Too faced chocolate bar palette and the whole gimmick with with this was that when you actually smelled it it smells of chocolate. And this one sort of doesn't anymore, but here you can see. And I did use this one quite a lot. Um, again, didn't hit pan on any of the shades, but this shade here, which is sort of a shimmery lid shade, and this shade here, this looks sort of like peanut butter. Uh, I have the colors here. So Marzipan and Salted Caramel are by far my two most used. And I did have the, I think the Semi Sweet and the Chocolate Bonbons palette at one point in time, but I also did get rid of those. This is the tin packaging. I don't know if it still comes in this. I must have stepped on it at one point in time. It did dent a little bit there, but still holding up pretty well overall. Um, and then I also got the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette, which has the peach scent, as you all know. And that one was okay. Again, oh, this one still has more of a smell. Um, but yeah. So I don't use those too, too often. Then I also have the Too Faced Natural Matte Palette which is an all matte palette um, and this is here. They're really pigmented but I don't find them super blendable um, so I don't tend to reach for this all that often either. So I would say that between those two sort of classics I would give Urban Decay the edge over Too Faced um, but neither of which do I use a ton apart from the Naked Honey and the original Urban Decay Naked Palette. Um, and I'm really sad that they have discontinued the original Urban Decay Naked palette. I hope that they actually bring it back at some point in time in the not too distant future. I have two palettes by Dior and they come in this nice velvet pouch of course. Uh, and the first shade that I have is 786 which is Terra which are these beautiful, beautiful, sort of neutral, um, all shimmery shades. They're, I would say, sort of like plummy tone neutrals but really wearable, really, really beautiful. Um, and the Dior formula is not always my favorite, and I don't always love their color stories. Sometimes they're a bit too editorial for my taste, um, but I do really like Terra. And then the other one that I have is 796, which is Queer Canage, which I really, really do love. It's super silky, really, really rich tone browns that are have a nice satin finish. They look really sophisticated on the eyes. They're what good have they have good pigmentation, but they're not. Um, sort of too overwhelming on the eyes. Um, so I really, really like that color story. And the other Dior, Dior palette I have is one of the Dior Backstage, and this is the Cool Neutrals palette. I haven't gotten that much use out of this, but it is just a really generic, um, a couple of satins, mostly matte, but cool tones, um, neutrals. And I went and I looked at the new Chanel Spring Summer 2020 palette in Elemental today. And now that I'm looking at this duo palette, I think that this could kind of give me the same look in that it's a slightly cool tone, neutral, a little bit taupey, some matte, some shimmers. Um, so I'm glad that I didn't buy the duo today. I wasn't that impressed with it. So I'm going to see if I can dupe some of that with my um, backstage palette. I have a few from Shantakai. First, I have their Polar Ice palette, which you can see the really beautiful packaging. This was from their spring collection last year, and I bought it sort of out of FOMO, and I just don't wear it. Like, these are way too pastel-y for my taste. I think they would be really nice as a sort of all-over-the-lid wash shade, um, and it looks really great with the purples, the blues, the peaches, but on the eyes, like, they're just so sheer, and they're too pastel-y for my taste, so I actually might see if I want to get rid of that, but for now, that's in my collection. And then I have four of the Chantecaille 
um, Chrome Luxe Duos. And these are super, super shimmery and really, really beautiful. Uh, so this is the shade, what is this? This is Tibet. So you have sort of two gray shades, um, and all of these are just duos, really beautiful. I have Grand Canal, which has a really, really beautiful greeny shade in it, a pewter, and then a deeper green shade over there, which is really nice. Um, I have the shade, let's see, Piazza San Marco, which is sort of a lighter silver and a deeper gray. That's Piazza San Marco there. And then my favorite of the four is Kenya, which is a sort of um, a light lilac and a deeper plum. These are, like I said, these are quite metallic. They are quite chromey on the eyes. Um, so if you like an all matte look, I wouldn't recommend them, but it's, it's chrome, it's metallic in the most sophisticated way that you could imagine. So I really, really love how these look on the eye. Um, I think they're just absolutely stunning. Um, and they're some of my all-time favorite eyeshadows out there. <laughs> One thing that I will say about these is that they don't close. So like, I don't know if you can tell, but there's no click. Like even though it has a button here where it should, they don't close, and that's not a fault of one of them, that's all of them. So it is quite frustrating, and I think that makes them not great for travel, just because I wouldn't want them to like bust open in my suitcase. Ah, that one clicked. But most of them don't, um, and I know that that's an experience that a lot of people have. So just a word of warning, if that will bother you, that's the thing about these. I have some Chanel. Uh, so I have two of the bigger, um, I guess, nine pan quads. So this is, um, the nine shadows and this is edition number two Conte Sans um, which again I don't know why I got this these are just shades that I will never ever wear I think I got it for the sort of like khaki green shade there I think I saw Katie Jane Hughes um, wear that um, but I'm just never going to use it so I don't really know why I have this but super beautiful um, and then of course it does come in this little velvet patch but a lot of times I get rid of this um, and this is the more nude one so this is um, from the Le Beige line, and this is Les Andres uh, Of course, the brushes are gonna fall out, which, like, who wants those? Um, so this is definitely a more neutral, more wearable. Um, and again, I haven't played around with this all that much, just because I find, like, it doesn't give me a lot of variation in color. So although this is a big hit with a lot of people, I haven't found it to be that super useful. Um, so I do wanna get more use out of it and give it a chance, but as of now, I just haven't had that much. I have 234 in Poesy, and this was the first one that I bought right after Chanel redid their eyeshadow formula a few years back. Um, and this is a really, really beautiful quad. Um, it's super, it is, they're all for our sort of a satin shades, um, and on the lid, all four do look really, really similar, but to me that makes it a really wearable look for work. Um, I work in a conservative profession, I can't go in with crazy eye looks, so whenever I put this on, it's subtle, um, sophisticated, and really, really beautiful without being matte or boring. Um, so that is one of my favorites in my collection. As you can see from the pans, I do get a lot of use out of that. And then even though I'm on a no-buy, uh, one of my rules is that I can spend gift cards if and when I get them. And for my employer, I did have a gift card. Plus I had a store, um, sort of like rewards card for my local makeup store. So today I went and got one of the new um, spring summer 2020 Chanel quad. So this is, what is it, 354 Warm Memories. I really thought I would like the other one, the Elemental, to 352 better. But that looks a little bit ashy and boring on my skin. And this is actually what I have in my eyes today. Um, it has one sort of true matte and three, well maybe one matte, two satins, and one that is a little bit more shimmery. Um, the sort of this lightest, like almost tangerine shade, which I just have the inner corner of my eyes, but I think that would also be really nice as a topper across the lids. Um, but I was really just like impressed by this. Like it was warm and rosy without being that sort of like ready, rusty warm um, that was popular for the past few years and just still looked really sophisticated with like the satin finish. Um, swatched really beautifully and I'm really happy with how it looks on the eyes. Uh, you do have to build up the color a little bit. It's not super opaque, but I find that true of most high-end shadows simply because it's not meant to be um, as, you know, immediately impactful. But I like that you can build it up a bit. 
Uh, switching from Chanel sort of at a higher end to um, to much more low end, I have uh, two, I guess, trios from Wet n Wild. Uh, I have Silent Treatment, which I think is really, oh, which I've never even opened. Um, and yet there's a cat hair in there. How does that even happen? Um, so Silent Treatment, and then I have Walking on Eggshells. And Walking on Eggshells is known for this one sort of um, duochrome shade. Where's that silent treatment? Yeah, no, that's silent treatment. Um, but Walking on Eggshells has this really nice eyelid shade. But with these, you can tell that the quality is just not great. Um, I just wouldn't really recommend these. I know they're only a few dollars or whatnot, but to me, they just the quality really pales in comparison to others that I have within my collection, so I don't think that I would ever really reach for those. And then, what's the point in having them? I have one palette from Hourglass, and this was launched after they had those really, really horrendous ones that sort of like all blurred together. Um, so this is in the shade Expose, and this I really, really like. It's sort of like um, a plummy mauve type of palette with some gray in there. Um, this, well, both of these sort of more purpley mauve shades are really beautiful and I've done some nice halo eye looks with these and the quality is really really nice on this so I know that Hourglass really kind of screwed up on that one palette launch where all of it, like I said the one that I mentioned that all the shades are linked together um, but these are really nice shadows and I recommend them just none of the other color stories really have ever spoken to me and I have enough eyeshadows so I never pick them up so I have a few uh, quads from Rouge Bunny Rouge who are quite a niche brand. Um, I want to say that they're, I always see them being really popular in Russian, in Russia with Russian beauty bloggers and also in Germany. Um, so I have two that are quads sort of in these little circle and then I have two that are more traditional palettes here. So the shades that I have in these, I have number 86 which is Antigo and that's what Antigo looks like here. And I have to say that these are the best mattes in my entire collection. They are so buttery. They're perfectly pigmented, meaning that they're not too pigmented, um, but you don't have to really work to build them up, and they just look stunning on the eyes. Like, in the pan, they look super boring. I get it. Why bother? But they're such amazingly beautiful shadows. Um, so this is a bit of a, a warmer neutral um, uh, quad, and here we have more of a cooler, more mauve shades um, coming in there. And this is number 92, Kalish. Um, so yeah, so I would say Antigo has gotten a little bit more wear because I've had it for longo, but longer, but both of them are super beautiful. And then I have two of their sort of more traditional quads. So these are, this one is the Raw Garden Eyeshadow Palette in the color white Luna, and these are all uh, matte shades, which again, Rouge Bunny Rouge are really known for the matte shades. Sort of like neutral shades, they look like nothing special, but they really, really are beautiful, and it comes with a brush, again, a bit of a waste. Um, but these are just like super wearable as crease shades, or if you want just a really sophisticated um, look for work or a really sort of like serious event, I would really recommend those. And then I have the Kronos eyeshadow palette, which you can see this, the Kronos has a bit of red um, on the lid, whereas the other one just has the black and white. So this is the Kronos palette, which is definitely more of a jewel tone. So it starts off with some sort of bronzes and peters, brush as fell. And then goes into some more jewel tone, like indigos and um, a really beautiful khaki green. Um, these are some of the, like, again, Rouge Bunny Rouge, just such an underrated brand, has some of the best textures of any shadows that I have in my collection. And I really recommend it. They're a bit of a pain to get, but they also always have sales of like 50% off at all times, so it's worth trying out. I also have a few Viseart palettes. I'm missing my Neutral Mattes palette. Um, I think I have Warm, Warm Neutrals? I don't know. Anyways, I can't find it. I'm hoping I left it in Beirut where I moved and I hope that it's so it's with my partner. So I hope I still have it, but we shall see. But in the meantime, I have a few different ones. I have the Liaison palette, which for all of these I have kept or I've tried to keep like the plastic inserts because they don't put the colors. Um, so this is the like purpley, uh, purpley 
shaded palette, um, palette with purples. I really, really love this one, especially if you want just a pop of color. Really beautiful textures, and I love the different color stories in there. There's enough neutrals with some pops of color. So that is, if I didn't say, that's the Liaison palette. Also, I have the Golden Hour palette, which I had worn for a really long time and then finally pulled the trigger on when um, there was a sale. I'm sorry, these are notoriously really hard to get into. Um, so I finally picked this up when there was a sale, but it's just not a color store that I've worn a lot. Um, it has some darker shades, sort of really like, like makes me think of like harvest season. Um, so really, really beautiful. I just don't think I've ever, doesn't even look like I've swatched any of them. So yeah, I've never worn these, so I can't really speak to that. But it should be the same formula, I believe, as the um, Liaison palette. So really nice. So that's the Golden Hour. And then I also have the Trist palette, which that's what that one looks like. So the cover is a bit rose gold. And these, as compared to the Liaison, are definitely more pink rose gold type of shades whereas the the liaison is definitely more purples um, so let me take off that so these are what those look like and again I love this formula in these sort of um, nine pan palettes so of course originally Vizier was known for their ones like the neutral mallet mattes that I'm not sure where they are um, but these are really beautiful as well and then I have a few of the um, theory palettes which are the ones that are smaller like this so um, much better price point if you're trying to get into the Viseart brands than some of their larger palettes. They've now kind of diversified. Um, so I have the shades, uh, I have the palette Amethyst, so that's this one. Again, these are all purpley shades. Really, really beautiful textures, mostly mattes. Well, actually, no, sorry, three mattes and three shimmers in this palette. And that might be the same for all the Siri palettes. So that's Amethyst. Um, so again, like neutrals, super wearable, but with a little bit of purple, and I also just really like the packaging on these. And then I also have the Theory palette in Cashmere, which I have gotten some good use out of. Yep, so three shimmer shades on this side. Oh, hey. So this is the Theory palette in Cashmere, so three satins and three mattes, sort of really wearable neutral browns. Um, again, like it kind of boring when you look at it in the pan, but just super, super wearable um, and really great formula on these three palettes. I really like these. And then I have two of these even smaller ones by Viseart, and these are the Petite Pros. And so I have the shade, or the colorway Apricotine, which are these like warm apricotty shades, um, which I don't think the texture or the quality of these shadows is quite as good as either the Theory palettes, the Nine Pan palettes are certainly like not their traditional, original, bigger ones, um, but they're really pretty shades. The Soleil palette, which is this yellow one, which I just couldn't resist. Love pop of color, love a little yellow on the inner, um, inner lid, and so this is a really nice purpley and yellow, reminds me of Lemonade. I have a couple of the Victoria Beckham Smoky Eye Bricks, which I just recently acquired and had talked about on my um, Instagram. So this is in the shade uh, Signature, and these sort of like the original those hourglass ones that I never have any, but was speaking of earlier, the shades sort of all blend into one, so that's Signature. And the second one that I have is Tweed. So Tweed is definitely much darker, quite a bit bolder, um, quite warm, but even like the lightest shade in Tweed is pretty dark, where Signature is much more wearable. The texture of these are great. I haven't quite figured out how I want to wear them in terms of the colors yet, because um, Signature I come across as like a little bit boring on my lid, so I didn't love it. Um, but really good quality as far as that's concerned. I have a Givenchy palette. This is the Le Prisissime uh, number 02 Essence of Browns, which is the weirdest name because they are in fact very much not brown, but rather quite plummy um, purpley, um, if you can see that there. So this is nine different shadows, quite small, um, all with at least a satin, if not a full on shimmer. Um, but I really, really like the look of that, so I'm going to give that a try soon. I just got that over Christmas, so I haven't tried it out yet. I have the Kevin O'Quan Nude Pop Palette, which was a limited edition, unfortunately, because it's a super popular palette. 
Um, it's mostly cool tones with a couple of pops of warmth um, in there, and namely the warm ones are also kind of corresponding to some of the really chunky glitter ones. So a bit of an unusual combo, um, but really, really fantastic textures, and Kevin O'Quan just has some really fantastic um, shadows in general. So if you ever see this or other palettes by Kevin O'Quan, probably worth checking out. So I recently picked up my first Zoeva palette, and this is the Nude Spectrum palette, which was inspired by Lily Pebbles back in the day. Um, so it's this really, really beautiful, there's lots of different colors in here, even though there's not much diversity. Um, I've only tried a couple of the shades, and I don't know if it's because I have so many other shadows or what, but I didn't love it. I have a bunch of uh, Natasha Denona palettes, starting with the Biba palette. This is this quite large one there. Okay, so I have not used this at all, which is shameful. Um, I did get it during a sale because their price point does tend to be quite high, um, but I've had it for probably about a year. Um, so this is a palette that I really want to really, really, really want to try. There's basically one row that's um, a bit cooler, one row that is probably a true neutral, and one row that's a bit warmer. Um, so people really rave about that. And then I also had picked up the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. I never got the sunset. Those colors just weren't my jam. But I thought the sunrise had more of a pinky warm undertone that I really liked. Um, with some really beautiful golden pops. Um, so there's some purple shades in there. I've worn a couple of the neutral shadows, but haven't given it enough love, which I really want to. Um, because I, in general, do enjoy the Natasha Denona formula. Um, so this is the one that I've worn the most over the years. This is palette number two. And these were her original sort of ones that she came on the market with and became known for. And they're really, really buttery. They do have a tendency to crease if you don't um, use an eyeshadow primer, so I would definitely recommend priming with these. Um, but they're just such beautiful shadows. Like, they just look so stunning and exquisite on the eyes. I really, really love them. So that's number two. Number nine I have is just like the most beautiful assortment of like khaki greens and that sort of vibe, which I really, really love and feel like is super popular now, but it's just stunning. And it's not as warm in tone as some of like the khakis that you see out there. Um, so that's number nine. I also got palette number 12 because of the purple shades in here. Um, this is another stunning one. I really, really think this is just exquisite. Um, and yeah, everything, I like her mattes, I like her sort of um, more satin shades, I like the more metallic ones that she has. Um, I have the Camel palette as well, which I have not really used except for the middle shade, but that is a really popular choice. And the packaging on that is slightly different, it's more rounded at the corners, um, and just doesn't really snap together, but just rather closes. And then I have three of the little mini palettes and I think I'm going to order the mini glam palette. I have a voucher to use at Sephora and I want to get my birthday gift which is in January. But anyway, so here's the mini um, star palette which looks really cute. Um, I don't have the large ones of any of these palettes nor have I used any of these minis so that doesn't really help. But here's the mini nudes. I feel like that's a big theme with a lot of my collection is that I haven't actually used these. And here's the mini lila palette which is a much more purpley um, uh, color story. So with the minis a lot of people say that they definitely lack in quality compared to her full size shadows and the price point is hugely different so I see why that would be. Um, but they're perhaps not the most representative of her shadows so just bear that in mind if you're trying out the miniatures. I do also have sort of uncharacteristic of me. I have the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette which I think I have used or swatched let me check, maybe, no, okay, it looks like I swatched one, two, looks like I've used two shades. Um, anyways though, I'm still kind of drawn to this, like I still think there's a lot of really beautiful shades in here in my opinion. In general, I'm not a huge fan of Morphe, it's just not really my jam, I don't like these big palettes, I don't really love a lot of the people I collab with, um, but yeah, back when this was all the rage, I did go ahead and pick that up. I also have one of these Scott Barnes eyeshadow palettes, which I would ordered this natural palette originally, and they sent the um, Color Bond palette, and when I told them that they sent the wrong one, they sent out the correct one, which I haven't received yet because it got shipped to my address in the States, and I live in the Netherlands. 
But um, they also, I told, like, asked where could I return this to, and they said to keep it. So, I mean, great customer service, but it's also a palette that I just don't see myself getting much use out of because I am boring and I stick to plain colors. As you can see, this is super bright and vibrant. There are some wearable shades, like over here in this row in particular, and then also on the edge here that would be, um, I could see myself wearing, but yeah, probably, especially these pinks in the middle, I just would never really get much use out of, which is a shame. But um, still, I really appreciate the customer service. Um, as compared to some other brands, they really seem to be doing it right. I have to say, I like love this Scott Barnes. I know it's not for everyone, but I love the way they styled his name on the cover of all of the palettes, but then still put them in sleeves to really easily identify them, like which is which. I have one Bare Minerals palette, and this is the Gen Nude Rose eyeshadow palette, and like the front has really come off. Um, but this is sort of a just really like dusty rose kind of neutral shades. Really nothing special um, in terms of the color uh, selection, but I do I do really like this palette, and it's nice. It's only six pans, sort of like very transportable, which is really nice about palettes like that. I have two by Laura Mercier. The first is the, what is it called? It's the Eye Artist palette, which is her really purpley palette that has like the vanilla nuts shade that everybody always talks about. So sort of um, purpley, neutral, sort of super wearable. I had this years ago, then I never used it and I got rid of it and then I bought it again. Because I'm nothing if not fickle, I mean, I've really not used too many shades from there, but I like the quality. And then I really like the um, Parisian Nudes eyeshadow palette, also by Laura Mercier. Um, some more conventional packaging. Um, and this kind of runs the range. It has some of the same similar tones over on this side in terms of the purple mauves, but then goes to some warmer and more green and golden shades on the other end, which makes it a little bit more diverse. Um, so I really like that one. Great quality in terms of the shadows. I have a few palettes from Lorac. Um, an oldie but a goodie is the Lorac Crocodile palette, and so called because the packaging is this little crocodile. But I mean, I must have gotten this in like 2004 or something like that. I don't know. Um, really, really pigmented. Pulls quite warm on the lids, but a beautiful, beautiful um, shades, and I really, really love that. I have the Lorac Unzipped palette which has gotten much love from me over the years. Yes. Some mauve and then some warm purpley tones. Um, so it, I always think of this as being a bit cool tone in the um, pan, but then when I actually wear it, it pulls quite warm on my skin. And then I have the three Lorac Pro palettes. So I, have, um, I think I'm actually allergic to these shadows. They always make my eyes really, really water, so I tend to not wear them that much, even though they're really versatile. These used to be all the rage, so this is the Pro palette. Um, and the whole shtick with these is the top row is matte and then the bottom row is shimmer. Um, so this is the Pro 3. These are a bit more rose goldy, as you can see perhaps. Um, really nice, but yeah, I think I just have like a mild allergy so they make my eye wa eyes water, so I just don't tend to grab for these. Um, and these are a bit more cool in tone. This is the Pro 2. So these are still available. They're still for sale. You can still get them. Just people don't talk about them as effusively as they used to back in the day. I have the Wonder Beauty Wondrous Chill Palette, which I really, really love. It's sort of like purpy, purpley, browny um, satin shades. And I guess there's one matte, this brown here in the corner, which is an excellent transition shade. I really, really like the quality of these, and I love the color story. Um, interesting. Not that unique, but just really, really pretty. Um, I have two of these Shiseido Essentialist Eye Palettes, and this is Coda Street Vintage, which is number five. Um, and they just look kind of like a little bit bland. They do swatch beautifully. I've never really loved the way that I've gotten these to look in my eyes, so I need to play around with them more because I've only worn them a couple of times. The other one that I have is the Hanatsubaki Street Nightlife, which is number six, which is definitely more of a pinky color story. Um, so less boring looking, but I actually think the other one is probably my preferred um, palette out of the two of those. I have this <laughs> dirty Marc Jacob, Marc Jacobs palette, and this is in 820 Stiletto, which I think was a limited edition last year, so really cool mauve shades. Um, I've heard that this super metallic shade breaks quite easily, so just word to the wise, um, maybe it's not the best palette for travel. 
And then I got this Ciate Glitter Storm palette because it was on sale for Sephora's website. And this was like a year ago and I think it's still on there. So um, perhaps not the wisest purchase in that I think it was definitely like a, it was on sale and that's why I bought it. Um, but so it's got a lot of like shimmer shades and then some satin ones and then a couple of matte shades. So generally like a pinky, purpley, taupey color story. Um, and really, really beautiful. And I do love Ciate blushes and I think it's a sort of underrated brand that not many people talk about. So I'm excited to try this out more. Um, I think I don't use my palettes that often. I think I use a lot more single shadows far more often than I do palettes. And that's something that I haven't, didn't really realize until I started to film this. And then I realized I have so many palettes that I've never really used or haven't used very often at all. I think it's because I go for my singles more often. I just stick to the same ones. So I want to make more of an effort this year in terms of that. I do have quite a few NARS palettes, which let me move these over. Um, so the first I have is the Narcissist Wanted palette, and this was limited edition a couple of years ago. And this has a lot of um, very metallic and shimmery shades, sort of a rose gold story. Um, haven't used it all that often, just a couple of shades. I have the NARS Voyager eyeshadow palette in the shade Quartz. This came out last year with, I think, two other shades, and they're beautiful, beautiful jewel tones. They look stunning in the pan. They're just super patchy on the eyes, so maybe some of these jewel tones would be good as like an accent color like on the lower lash line, but not really good for all over the lid where just they're too patchy. I have a few eyeshadow duos. This is in the uh, shade St. Paul de Vence. Um, and I do have a couple of these that I've um, depotted and put into Z palettes that I'll talk about when I do my individual shadows, but since these are still in the horrendous NARS packaging, may as well talk about them now. Um, this is in Portobello, really great mattes, super wearable, nice and easy. And then Hamamet, um, all of these are pretty similar, like warm, slightly warm neutrals, um, easy to wear. I have the Skin Deep, uh, sorry, no, this is the Hot Nights palette, that's it there. Um, this was, I think, limited edition last summer, there was Hot Nights and like Summer Nights, something like that. Really, really beautiful shades, a couple of cheek products on there, they're all, um, shimmery um, and super wearable. One of my favorite from NARS is this Connor Tinkley palette and this I think was exclusive to their website. Um, and it's six shades, uh, most of them neutrals, but then this blue is just like the most beautiful blue. Really lovely on the lash line. Um, all of these are super buttery, blendable, really easy to wear and just have a beautiful finish on the lid. Then I also have the Skin Deep palette, which I think was limited edition, but you can still actually get it, even though it came out a while ago. And this was the one that some of the pans are bigger than the others, which a lot of brands have started to do now. Um, and the ones that are bigger, and here are the matte shades, so probably the ones that you'd use more often. Really, again, just like general, um, you know, neutral shadows, nothing revolutionary in the color story, but really nice palettes for travel and a beautiful shade. Beautiful shades, rather. I have quite a lot of Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes, quite a few. Um, I, I used to have more, and I think I do have more maybe in storage back in the States, of her old um, smaller ones that are like the uh, Mario palette here, so I will start with that. Um, so I have like the self-made other ones, but in any case, I'll, I'll just go through what I have here. So the Mario palette, which people always talk about really, really loving. The problem with this is I find it comes across as really dark on my lids. So I don't find it to be the most wearable, even though it is quite beautiful. Um, I have the Jackie Ina palette, which I got over the Christmas holidays, so I have not used. And I'm worried this is also going to be too dark on me, but it was just so beautiful and I wanted to support Jackie. Um, so I went ahead and bought that. At the same time, I got the Carly Bible palette, which is actually still in the packaging. Um, so that's what that looks like. And this is, they're, you know, not too different, but this is just much more wearable, I think, for um, lighter skin tones. So I'll probably end up getting more use out of that. And the ABH shadows are quite powdery, um, but really pigmented and pretty easy to blend, pretty easy to wear. Um, Modern Renaissance, which has that velour finish, which is awful, <laughs> um, gets super dirty. This was, I would say, like, Anastasia Beverly Hills first like mega popular eyeshadow palette. Sort of those warm ready tones which I don't really actually love. 
Um, I've gotten some use out of this, never as much as a lot of other people, um, just because the shades don't really speak to me, but I still wanted it, you know? So I have the Soft Glam Palette, um, which has, again, like, I just feel like the palettes are maybe too dark, like they're too pigmented for what I like. But I'm always so drawn to them, like I buy them every time. Um, so I've used that only a couple of times. I have not yet used the Norvina palette, but this is another fairly recent, as in December 2019, uh, purchase. So these are much more purpley shades, although the purples are really an ac like accent colors. Like there's a lot of pinks, some mustards, and just some general neutrals in there. But to me, I think also because of the packaging, I think of it as a purple palette. And then the last one I have right here right now is the Sultry palette. Um, which has a lot of really high shimmer shades. Um, and so I haven't used this at all, I don't think. Maybe a little bit. But I don't know why I keep buying these, but apparently their color story just really, really speaks to me, and I like it a lot. I have a few Lime Crime palettes. I have two of their little, like, pocket candy, poly pocket type shadows. Um, so this is in... What is... Sugar Plum. Okay, this pink one. So it's called Sugar Plum. And as the name suggests, very pinky plummy shades, um, really cute. I think I got these on sale. I don't know that I'd buy them at full price, but because of the nostalgia and because they were on sale, I got them. Um, and then I also got the Birthday Cake palette, which is this one here. This is a really beautiful green shade. Um, and the other shades in this are super wearable. So you can do green as an accent and the others wear really well on the lids. And that green shade segues actually into the Venus XL2 palette that I have by Lime Crime, which does have a lot of greens. It's sort of like these earthy greens and dusty pinks, um, some really, really beautiful shadows in there. I just don't think that Lime Crime, I think they do great color stories and they're sort of like that provocative brand, pretty innovative, but I don't think their shadow quality is actually the best. So. If that's what you're after, I would not necessarily recommend them. I have also some Charlotte Tilbury palettes. I have two of her look in a, what is it, yeah, instant look in a palette. One I got in a Beautylish Lucky bag a few years ago, and this is the Smoky Eye Beauty. I think this is discontinued. Um, I don't think I've ever used those. I have used her more recent one, which is the Gorgeous Glowing Beauty instant look in a palette a bit deeper, a bit more like beach, bombshell, whatever, beachy look. Um, I really like the quality of those shadows and it's just super easy to take on work trips. I have a couple of her luxury palette of pops. This is in Celestial Eyes and these are the ones where they're all of her pop shades. So they're all shimmer shades. Um, they apply well with fingers but I do still prefer a brush. Um, so that's Celestial Eyes. I have the palette of pops also in Pillow Talk. Yep, that's this one. So it's sort of more shimmery pinks, really pretty. And then I have the regular classic Pillow Talk, which is these like pink neutrals right here. And then I have the Exaggerize. Um, I don't love any of these, they look better in the bin they do on my eyes, but they are nice and I keep them around for a reason. I have one um, palette by Cargo. I think I still have more in storage, but this is the Essential palette. Um, and this is in the Cool Neutral. So it's got four shades and they'll label it as like crease, eye bone, lid, whatever. Um, in theory, I remember buying this because I was told that it would be good for somebody with hooded eyes, which of course I do have, um, but I've never really used it, but still, I like it in principle, and I know I have other cargo palettes, more of the colored ones, but I just don't have them here. I think they're in storage in the US. I have one dirty um, Giorgio Armani palette, and this is in the colorway Incognito. So it's got this like khaki green and then these other sort of like soft uh, brown neutrals, and this is shade number six. Um, I really, really, really love the texture of those and want more of them. I also went on an impulse purchase and got the Huda Beauty Neon Green palette, and I love this palette. I think it is so cool. Um, 
to do like a neutral on the lid and then one of these in the inner corner I think looks stunning and I also really like this plastic packaging. Um, I really like a nine pan palette in this sort of like square size I guess is what I'm saying. I have the Joseph Colors The Girls. Um, how, this was a Desi Katie collab with Joseph Colors and I have never used this but I really want to. Um, and these textures look like they will crease but be really cool and I really want to give this a try very very soon. I've had it for long enough. I have the Fit Glow Beauty. Um, I think this is like the Hot Nights palette or something. I can't remember. Uh, but it's definitely the Nights ver night version of their palette. So it's got a cheek shade in there and then a bunch of eyeshadows. I got this in a special deal from Beauty Heroes along with one of their lip serums which are really fantastic. I have just one palette by Pat McGrath and that's the Platinum Bronze. It's a little hard to show because the packaging doesn't open fully. Um, but so it's this sort of <laughs> um, plummy, neutrals, bronzies. All of her color stories like look the same to me. Um, but I do really like this one and it's one of the smaller ones so it's at a much better price point. Um, even though, I mean, it has fewer shades and doesn't have any special shades that are in some of her others. I have one of the Smashbox Color Cover Shot in Golden Hour, um, which exactly that, it's just sort of like a lot of really beautiful rose gold shades. Um, I really like this one. I really like the formula, and I like a lot of the different color stories for the color shots. I have one Kylie Jenner or Kylie Beauty um, powder palette. This is, I think, the Momager palette is what it's called. Um, so this is a slightly slightly cool neutrals. I actually really, really like this. Um, they aren't super pigmented, which is nice on a day when you want a little bit more of a subtle eye. Um, so yeah, so I find that actually really refreshing. And yeah, a bit of uh, an, an orthodox choice for me because I'm not, um, like I don't watch the Kardashians, but I just saw this and I thought it looked really nice. I have one palette by Kat Von D, which I regret buying. Simply because I don't want to support Kat Von D and her anti-vax and her anti-Semitism. Um, but yeah, this is the Lolita palette. It is sort of pinky mauves. And now that she has sold her stake in her company to Kendo, I can get on board with them again, I think. Um, I have the Persona Identity palette, which the formula on these is beautiful. Um, really, really lovely. Buttery, pigmented, just stunning shadows. I got my first ever Nabla Cosmetics palette recently, and this is the Dreamy eyeshadow palette, the original one, um, which has a lot of really nice pinky and purple shades. Um, I haven't tried this out yet. It's quite new, so I don't really know what I think of it yet, but really, really beautiful. Um, and people sort of rave about the Nabla formula, so I'm excited to try it. I have the Becca Volcano Goddess palette, which a lot of people really said was not good. Um, I like the colors in it, so it's got a ginormous mirror, which I'll try to hold down. Um, so it's got just general neutrals and then some really like bolder shades over here, which I don't see myself using. Um, it's not super pigmented, but again, like you don't really always want a super bold eye look, I think. So from what I've tried, I like it. It's not the most original, not the most unique, but it's fine. Um, so I think that one is no longer available, but... And last but not least are all of my Tom Ford eyeshadow quads, of which I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so I'll quickly go through those and give my brief thoughts on the ones that I've tried at least. So this is Double Indemnity, um, and this is a gray palette that I have not tried at all. But this is the wet dry formula. I have Silvered Topaz, which the mirror on this one broke in transit. Um, and I think this is discontinued, which is why I got it. So again, it's slightly warmer, not quite as cool toned, but sort of the more gray and taupey family. I've got Super Nouveau, which looks a bit boring in the pan, and I've not tried them, but um, quite a different color combination of the four there. I've got Coco Mirage, which is an absolute classic, and since it's apparently been discontinued, if you haven't yet, go grab it. These are very, very pigmented, super buttery. Um, they look boring, but they look great in the eyes, great in combination with other palettes, 
and I think he's just crazy to have discontinued this palette in particular because it's such a popular one. That Pretty Baby, which is a new shade that he had last year, this is a sort of like pinky purple um, palette and really, really beautiful. I like this a lot. Suspicion, which is my all-time favorite quad. Um, I thought it'd be way too warm for my eyes and not at all wearable because it's these sort of golden shades, but it is perfect. It is not too warm and it has that truly golden undertone, not like a red or an orange. Really, 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 really beautiful. Um, they are all satin shades, so if you definitely want a matte, this is not the one for you, but I love it. I absolutely think it's the best. I have Orchid Haze, which has gotten some use over the years and kind of, I don't want to like tilt it up completely because this darker shade here has crumbled and I think it's going to like spill everywhere. But this is the very first one I ever bought um, and so I wore it a lot. The three other shades, so not the one that um, broke, but the three others are just really beautiful shimmers that I've gotten a lot of use of. So let me see if I can show you a little bit better. Not really. Um, so I just don't want to have all of that tumble out. And then Nude Dip, which is another really popular one. This reminds me a lot of Chanel Poesie in the finish and also the color selection and the fact that all four of these shades end up reading to be quite similar on the eyes. Um, nonetheless, it's a nice one. Um, and it's a sophisticated sort of like shimmer slash chrome on the eyes. Um, so yeah, those are all of my Tom Ford and those are all of my palettes. Um, over the next coming year, I don't really foresee any palettes that I'm going to feel like, oh, this is a must-have. I really need to have it. I have so many eyeshadows, and I don't really wear that much eyeshadow on a regular basis because I've got really small eyes, so it's not like I'm like plowing through my pans. There's so many that I haven't tried, so I first want to go through and use up, or at least try out each of the palettes that I have before I'll even be tempted to buy any more, so I think that'll be a pretty easy goal for me to accomplish this next year. But let me know if you have any questions about these palettes, and also let me know what palettes are your favorites in your collection. Alright, thanks. Until the next time. Bye-bye.